forward everybody this is Eternal Blade here and welcome back to another 3DS Max Modifier Monday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Champer Modifier. So my scene's pretty simple here. I have one box that's converted to an editable poly and one editable poly which just has a beveled top face just so I can illustrate the different effects the Champer Modifier has. So jumping right in let's just apply a one centimeter chamfer to this and we're on quad chamfer and you can see that our chamfer is all in quads, and it affects every edge on our object. So you see here, in, even in the little uh, corners here, we've got four-faced polygons, or four-edged polygons. Now in the standard chamfer, that's going to turn into a triangle. So this is basically just different types of subdivision. Now the amount here just affects the size of the chamfer, and of course the segments affect how subdivided the chamfer is. Now you'll notice when I put four segments in here, the segments don't actually affect the look of the quad chamfer. However, the standard chamfer will get more round as you add more segments. But that's because of the tension value. So at a tension of one, you're gonna have a perfectly hard chamfer on your quad chamfer. At a tension value of zero, you're gonna have a perfect box. As shown, you're just gonna subdivide the edges. Now, if you wanna get the quad chamfer to look like the standard chamfer, just set the tension here to 0.5 and you'll have the same results for both chamfers, with the exception of the geometry will be a bit cleaner with the quad chamfer or a bit more messy depending on which way you look at it. Now let's just stick with quad chamfer here for a moment and take a look at the open chamfer option. So what the open chamfer does is it simply deletes all the geometry that's being chamfered. So pretty neat and it can lead to some pretty cool effects if that's what you're looking for. And the flip side of that is you can invert it and have the geometry that's not being chamfered deleted. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move over to this mesh here. And I've already applied the chamfer modifier to it. And what we want to do here is just select the top facing polygon, go to your chamfer, and let's go ahead and make our selection from stack so it's only chamfering what we had selected, which is that top edge there. And let's crank and let's uh, uncheck lumen effect and crank this way up. So you're going to see we have the polygons coming outside of the edge. And what the limit effect does is it prevents that. So you can only chamfer this as much as your largest polygon is. So you'll see the top one can still be chamfered. Right here it goes through, but I can't go any farther than the biggest one. And that's because that limit effect option is enabled. Okay? Let's just bring that down for a little bit. So and that brings us to this selection. So you can do a multiple variety of selections here. So let's say I go to my editable poly and I select you know, these two edges right here, okay? Go to your chamfer modifier and I move this to selected edges. It'll only do those two selected edges. Or you can do selected vertices. Now you see the only vertices that are chamfered is this one right here. Go to the vertex mode, that's the only one selected. So it just gives you a different variety of methods of selecting specifically what is chamfered. And you can read them all here. It's all the exact same. Just doing selected faced edges, borders, vertices, etc. So now we have a different option here, which is, let's actually change this to from stack and uncheck everything here. So now we can do input options from smoothing. So right now if we do it, you'll see smooth edges, nothing is chamfered and unsmooth edges, everything is chamfered. Well, this is driven by the smoothing groups in your editable poly stack. So if I come down here and I select, let's say these four polygons right here along the edges, and I come here and just hit auto smooth, okay? And let's just assign them group 32. Now if I go to my chamfer modifier, you're gonna immediately see that some faces are smooth and some of them are not. Now, I right now have unsmooth edges, which means all the edges I didn't smooth are being chamfered. So all these ones down here, as well as the top. If I flip that to smooth edges, you're gonna see the reverse. Just the edges I smoothed are actually being chamfered. And the exact same thing, let's turn that off here for a second, can be said for material ID. So if I go to my editable poly here, and let's um, select this top polygon, now we're going to set this material ID to 1, and then uh, these ones right here we're going to set to 
2. And if I go back into my chamfer modifier and for material ID, use different materials, you're going to see that where your 1 value is and where your 2 value is are chamfered separately. So that can be pretty handy if you've got a scene preset up for materials as well as um, your material IDs um, created. Now another cool thing here, let's actually turn that off, is the minimum and maximum angle for limiting your effect. So right now we have a variety of angles here. Um, let's just start this off at 5 degrees for the minimum. You're going to see nothing happens. Now let's bump this up to 45 and you're going to see that this top piece disappears. Now that's because the angle between this face and this face is less than 45 degrees. So if we move this up to 60 degrees, you're going to see that, well, nothing happens because we need to move this up, this one up to 60 degrees. And now we see that these angles have all disappeared in these vertices because the angle between the two polygons is less than 60 degrees. And if we do 90, the remainder of them are going to disappear. Okay, or they should. I'm not quite sure why they're not. Let's see here. Ah, sorry, 180 is what I actually needed to push because the angle is going to be greater between those. And the same thing can be said for your max angle. So if we move this back to, uh, let's see, 35. And let's do 45. And we change our max angle to 90 or 60. You'll see that the polygons with a higher angle between them are not chamfered, but the lower ones are. So you kind of have a range, okay? Um, now we have some additional options down here for set chamfer material ID. So if you want the chamfers to be a different material, like for example, um, a weld or a seam, you can just easily set them as a different material. That way when you go to your do your texturing, you can easily add materials to those chamfers without selecting them individually, which is really, really handy. All right, and then your last option here is the smoothing options. So what you can do is smooth the entire object. So if you render that out, you're going to have a perfectly smooth object minus the smoothing groups beneath it. Or smooth only your chamfers, which will give you your chamfers are smooth, but the rest of your object doesn't change. Um, now you also have this smooth to adjacent, which will just give you some options on how you want to smooth. So if you bring the threshold up, they're all going to smooth. If you bring it down, you'll see you get these harder edges. All right, so that was a quick overview of the chamfer modifier. Um, I hope you guys have learned something here. You can use this in a lot of different models to really speed up your workflow as opposed to manually chamfering all your edges. It does require a bit of playing with to get used to, but I would highly recommend uh, you test it out and play around with some sample scenes. All right, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my um, Facebook channel, Gumroad channel, and my Google Plus account. So with that being said, um, I hope you guys have a great day and happy modeling.